Hello, Pisces. I'm going to look into your situation. It's whatever the cards want to say, whatever the story is. It's unpredictable sometimes, but most of the time it ends up being about love. Let's see what happens, though. So what is going on with you guys? Vulnerability, receptivity. And as always, if you want a private reading, my email is below in the description box. It is dragonenchantress at AOL.com. So you can just copy and paste that and email me. Any donations are deeply appreciated, and my donation links are also below in the description box. Oh, oops. So we've got vulnerability, receptivity, overthinking, overanalyzing, self-sabotage, taking it slow, pulling them in, getting to know each other. Cards are all mixed up. Manipulation, deception, X, the past. So I feel like... This could be you dealing with your own trauma, but I also feel like this could be someone that you're trying to get to know better and they're really damaged. Because it feels like they start to really let you in and be vulnerable with you, and then they overthink it. They overanalyze it. They sabotage it. So I guess I'll pull some more cards and see if this connection is really going to be worth it for you or not. But it's like, I feel like you're trying to be patient with them, or like maybe they're trying to take it slow and just you guys are trying to get to know each other. But it's like they might have this third party. So this could actually be like a current third party that's in their life that you're not actually aware of. But for a lot of you, I'd say for the majority of you, this is just someone from their past that's not currently in their life. But I feel like this person really gaslit this person. This person really like deceived them and put them down and abused them. This was like, and this was a mentally, possibly even a physically abusive relationship. So someone from their past that did this to this person. So I think your spirit guides are kind of wanting to tell you what's up because I feel like maybe you're feeling insecure yourself now because you're like, okay, wait a minute. This person feels like they're so vulnerable with me. They feel like they're opening up to me. And then they get in their head and they overthink things and they overanalyze things and they, they get kind of distant from you and you don't know what's going on at this point. And I just feel like this person is just, they're a really deep thinker. And I think they're just kind of losing themselves. They haven't really healed from this energy right here. I think this person really did a number on them. This person really like spread rumors in the community about them, lied to their friends, tried to turn their friends against them. Like this, this is someone that doesn't go quietly in a breakup. I feel like maybe they did break up, but then it's like this person um, decided that they were going to ruin your, your love interest life here because, you know, how dare they leave them? This is like a very narcissistic, toxic, manipulative person. Um, very, I get like a very controlling energy, very insecure, very emotional, like almost like this person felt like, how dare they leave me? How dare they try to free themselves from me? You know, they were used to having the control over this person. They were used to being able to blindfold this person and, and whisper, you know, whatever they wanted in their ear and this person ate it up. You know, this person's very like impressionable, I feel, or they used to be at least. And so I feel like this still, this really just did a number on them. And I think it's made them like afraid to love because they don't want to get caught in a situation like that again. They don't want to lose themselves in a connection like that again. Some of them, they might also have kids. And so their kids are a concern when it comes to new love because they don't want their kids in a situation like that again. Like they don't trust the kind of people that they've dated in the past. And so there's this fear of really getting close to anyone. Well, let's see what else the cards have to say. Let's try to find out if this is going to be worth it for you to be patient with this person. Here we have choose a path. We have trapped, blocked, and tied up. Dreams, vision, telepathy. Fast moving energy, sudden changes of events. Betrayal, jealousy, conflict. Yeah, it's like this person's going to have to choose. Are they going to stay, you know, trapped in this, whatever happened with this person? This person probably cheated. They could have cheated on them as well. Um, this person's a backstabber. Betrayal, jealousy, conflict. This could be a third part. Pretty part. Oh, my gosh. 
a third party situation that you guys were all in. But for a lot of you, I feel like this is just someone you're getting to know and they just have this history that they haven't let you know about yet. And, you know, they're getting to that point where it's like they, they have to choose. But it is showing me that they do have feelings for you. It's like they're not, if they're silent, if they start being vulnerable with you and they start being kind of emotional and open with you and then they kind of get scared and they back off, it's like they do have feelings for you. But you also can't stay in limbo forever. So it kind of depends on them if they're going to work through this trauma and, and give themselves this opportunity to trust someone and let someone in again. So they have to choose this path now. It's like, are they going to stay trapped by what they went through with this toxic person? And it's one person in particular, like they might've had like a long list of like toxic exes, but there was one really toxic controlling ex. Like this person kept them on a leash and it's like, they're just, you know, they finally have this freedom and they're like, oh God, what if this new person's like that too? <laughs> But I feel like their intuition is telling them to go for you. You know, you guys may be having dreams about each other, telepathically communicating. You know, it's just a sudden turn of events. And it's like, you know, are they going to have the, the guts to go for that? Let's see. Okay. True. Life, yeah, potential life partner energy here. Hidden truth. Fear of commitment. Finances and career. I'm just. Yeah, it looks like a lot of them are going to um, come to these realizations on their own. I feel like a lot of them are probably going to come to these realizations after the retrograde as well. Because, okay, this Mercury, we just had Venus retrograde and it just and it just ended recently. Mercury is just now about to come out of, out of retrograde. And I don't know the timeline. I think it's within like the next week or so, I want to say. I'll have to check on that. But I really feel like, I really feel like this retrograde probably brought up a lot of past emotions and really did a number on them and made them more scared than they would usually be. Um, I feel, I do feel like it looks like they're taking off the mask though. We have hidden truth coming out. And I think that they're going to acknowledge this fear of commitment. It's like, see, fear of commitment. We have finances and career. They could have lost themselves in finances, but I'm also just drawn to look at the mask here. How this person, see how these people, it's like they're hiding their face. But in the end, it looks like they do they do choose um, love over fear. Bold, gest bold gesture, risk, reward. Oh my gosh, I don't know what is wrong with me today. I cannot talk. But yeah, and it does look like this could be a potential life partner. And I just want to say, someone that loves you will choose you. You know what I mean? Like, don't make excuses for people that are emotionally unavailable. There is a balance. You know what I'm saying? Like, they they shouldn't be playing games with you and sabotaging things. But if you've met a really good person, like someone that's just very, like, just innocent, um, idealistic, loving, kind, and they've just gone through a deep trauma with, you know, an ex that was abusive with them, then, then yeah, be patient with them. That's, that's different than going after someone who's just completely emotionally unavailable. You know what I mean? Cause I feel like with this person, I feel like you can see that they are trying, that they do want to be vulnerable with you, that they are vulnerable with you, but that they still just have some unresolved traumas that they really need to sort out. But yeah, it does look like there's some kind of hidden truth that's going to come out where they're going to be forced to look at this mask, to look at, to question themselves, to to really look at this toxic relationship that they, that they were stuck in and, um, you know, really be honest with themselves about what they've been through and start the healing process and choose love in the end. And I really don't feel like they want this person back. Like, it's not like that. I'm, I'm not, you know, I mean, each, everyone's story is different. So maybe for a couple of you, but for, for like 95% of you, I would say, no, they don't want that person back. This is someone that was like abusive and like kept them on a leash. And so they're enjoying their freedom now. And they're just taking, they're just trying to heal. They're still like, this person could have PTSD or some kind of mental illness, even from what this person did to them. This was like a very abusive relationship here. You know, this wasn't just someone who's, you know, nags them a little bit. No, this is like someone like slits their tires and deletes all their female or male friends off their Facebook or Instagram, um, goes to their phone and throws it against the wall, yells at them, threatens to take the kids from them if they, if they have kids, just, just chaos. You know, this isn't like an average relationship where there's a little bit of jealousy and insecurity. This is someone who's like off the rails, you know, so this person does not want this person back. There's no, there's no longing there. There's no nostalgia. They're not missing them at all. They're, they're still just really shaken up by what they went through and they want to make sure that they don't end up in a situation like that again. 
This person has a lot of triggers too. I feel like you really need, if you're going to love someone like this, because this I do feel like this person probably has mental illness. If this is your story, I do think, okay, I don't, I don't know for sure if they have a mental illness. I don't want to like diagnose anyone, like full disclaimer, I am not qualified to diagnose anyone with a mental illness, but I want to say some of them have a mental illness or it's like the, it's like the energy of a mental illness. Does that make sense? So it's like either a mental illness or it's just, they have so many deep rooted issues from this person that they need to heal that it almost is as intense as a mental illness would be. Does that make sense? It's like, there's, there's a lot going on mentally with this person. Let me just say that. And that does need to be healed. Um, so if you do decide to love this person, it's going to require quite a bit of patience and understanding. Um, you're also going to need to need to be mindful of your their triggers because there might be certain things when you just say like, let's say, and this could be male or female. You could be a male. You could be a female. You could be, you know, both. It's Whatever you are is fine. But let's just say, for example, that this is um, a man that you know, likes to go out with his friends on Friday night and watch football or likes to go out and drink on Friday night or likes to go out, you know, fishing or likes to go skiing or, or doing something with his friends once in a while. And and this woman always, you know, nagged him and said, oh, no, no, you don't. Like, no, how dare you? This is, you know, you have to be home, like giving him curfews, like, oh, you have to be home and like treating him like a child. And so if you, you might just simply ask, hey, like, are you going to be with your friends today or can you come over? And he, that might trigger him. And it's nothing that you did wrong. It's just simply that, you know, it, it's like a flashback, like a PTSD flashback to when this person did did that to him. And I know that's frustrating to deal with. So you got to ask yourself, too, if you want to deal with that. But, um, but yeah, I do feel like this person is going to start healing from that, though. But, but it, it's just going to require you being kind of patient with them and kind of mindful of their triggers. And it's going to require open, honest communication. Like, hey... Um, like, I'm I'm totally fine if you're hanging out with your friends today. I just was curious if you'd want to come over if you're not with your friends. Like, letting them know that they have, letting this person know that, that he or she has that freedom to go hang out with their friends and go do the things that they love. Um, and that you're not trying to, you know, put a leash on them. They need to know that they have freedom. That's coming through really strongly is that this person controlled them on such a huge level that this person needs to know that they're free, that they're free to hang out with their friends, they're free to say what they want, what they feel, they're free to 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 do to live their life as they want. This person treated this person, this this toxic ex treated this person as a child and made them feel like a child, made them feel like a little boy or a little girl, like put them down and scolded them like like how a mother talks to their kids you know? And so it kind of messed this person's head up. Like, look at this person. They're just like on a hilltop, like depressed, like, uh, what do I do now? <laughs> you know? And so I feel like in some ways they still feel like a child that's going to get scolded. And so they kind of need, you know, they kind of need that reassurance where it's like, you know, just tell them like, Hey, you're free. You're, you're a full grown man or a full grown woman. You go out with your friends if you want to. I just wanted to know if you'd like to come over later, but it's totally fine if you don't, you know, like leaving it open, letting them know that, that you want to see them, but like letting them know that they have their freedom and that they have that support from you as well. You know, it's really going to take some patience if you want to love this person. Um, And like I said, you have to be mindful of their triggers because if you're not mindful of it, you might trigger them and they, you might not even realize that you're doing it and they might just distance themselves and you might be like, what the hell did I do? And it might just be something that just like, you know, I know it sucks, but it, it is what it is. It's, you know, I'm not saying that it's right or wrong. I'm just saying this is the energy. You know what I mean? Take it as you want to take it, but this is just what the energy is. You know, I'm unbiased here, but you know, I'm just saying, like I said, you might just simply ask them what they're doing later and they might just be like, oh, like, oh my God, she, he or she used to keep tabs on me like that. I don't want, no, I don't want to, don't keep tabs on me. Like, you just like panic. You know what I mean? Like just, they want their freedom. They don't want to be controlled. They don't want to be smothered. Um, but this person does have a big heart. Like they're capable of loving you and being with you. Don't get me wrong, but they're, they, they just, they need to heal from this, but it does look like there, this hidden truth is going to come out that there is true love here with you, that there is potential here with you. I and mean, I think they're going to start really looking at this, you know, taking off the mask and really acknowledging it and realizing that, you know, not every relationship is going to be like this one. And I do feel like they are going to choose love in the end here. Pride and stubbornness. Sex and seduction. 
Nostalgia and longing, codependency, addiction. I feel like this person played a lot of mind games with them too. Like they, you know, if they weren't communicating, it's like this person would like seduce them and try to pull them back in and make them nostalgic and then get them back in this codependent cycle where it's like they're both just addicted to each other. But I really feel like your person's broken that. Like, like I said, I don't get any emotion towards this person. Like your person is like, they're interested in you. They have feelings for you. They just haven't healed is the only thing. Like they don't want this energy back. Loyalty, stability, vows, domination, and control, hesitation, and mixed feelings, divine intervention. Yeah, it's like this person doesn't like being forced to be loyal. I feel like this was the type of person, like in, this, in the past, I feel like this person was like the type to be like, just like nagging them all the time. Like, oh, you need to take me to a nice restaurant. You need to take me to... You need to buy me flowers. You're not you're not a real man if you don't buy me flowers. This, that. And it could be male or female. You know, take it as it resonates. There's no specific gender here. But I just feel like it's one of those things where it's like if you if anyone tries to like force their loyalty and force the connection, this person's gonna run. They're gonna hesitate. And so I think the divine is intervening here to kind of show you guys, like, hey, like. This is what's going on. It's not that they don't want to commit to you. It's that they don't want anything forced. They don't want this inner, everything, every little thing reminds them of this energy right now. And it's, it's hard. Um, so it's like being, you know, it's just a matter of being patient with them. Um, God, this is a tricky energy. Because it's like they can be really loyal to you. They can, but they have to do it on their own. If they feel, it's like one of those things where it's like, if you nag a man to like bring you flowers and it's like he doesn't want to bring you flowers at that point. He has to do it on his own if he's going to do it. You know what I mean? I know it sucks. It's a, it's a pain in the ass. I get it. But I just feel like she, like this person knew, like she, and again, male or female, even if I say she, if you know it's a he, that's fine. Just take it as it resonates. But I feel like she knew that he was like not, in, not deeply in love with her. Like maybe he stayed with her for the kid's sake. Or, like, he stayed with her because, you know, she was abusive and just wouldn't let him go. I feel like she threatened him, like, threatened, like, to to turn his friends against him if he left her. And I feel like, you know, he, she might have. Like, she might have really tried to, like, seduce his friends and get his get his friends on her side when he left. There, might, there was probably a lot of chaos there. I don't think that that was a smooth breakup at all. I think that was a huge mess when they broke up. But I just feel like... Like, she kind of, like, just knew that he was with her for the wrong reasons or that he didn't truly, deeply love her or that he was just with her because she was, you know, trapping him practically, maybe, you know, you know, forcing him to stay for the kid's sake. And so it's one of those things where it's, like, he's so against anyone, like, trying to push feelings, you know, trying to, trying to move things too quickly or trying to move, trying to um, make him feel a certain way. Like, he still feels like a child. He still feels like, he still has that mentality of, like, being scolded by his mother to do this and that. And he wants to get out of that energy and feel like himself again and feel like he can be strong, like he can be a warrior, like he can feel what he wants to feel and say what he wants to say and do what he wants to do and go out with his friends um, without, you know, there being consequences for just, you know, going out with his friends or not calling her back five seconds after she called. Do you know what I mean? Um, so it's one of those things where you're going to have to really let go. Of, if you want this person, if you want this to work, you're going to have to really let go of control issues and really let it unfold naturally. Because anything, if you try to push this and make it go too quickly, um, or if he feels like he's being, you know, told what to do, it's going to, one of those things that's going to trigger him and make him kind of run. And I know that sucks. So it's kind of up to you if you want to deal with this or not. But but yeah, this person, it's basically this person is really damaged. I think that your spirit guides just wanted to give you a look into this and kind of say, hey, like this person does have feelings for you, but it's it's complicated. It's it's not as simple as they love you or they don't love you. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, they have feelings for you, but they're also really damaged and they need to work through these issues if they're going to love you properly. Otherwise, things are going to keep triggering them. So, I mean, communication is a big key here is that, you know, being mindful of their triggers 
but you also don't want to get to a point where you have to walk on eggshells for them either. So you have to kind of find that balance. Like, like, Hey, I would really like to see you tonight, but I understand if you're, if you know, tonight is the night that you usually go out with your friends. So if you're doing that tonight, I understand, but if you're free, I'd really like to watch a movie tonight. You know what I mean? That's fine in that balance. You're not like avoiding asking for what you want, but you're showing him that he has that freedom and that he has, you know, you're being empathetic. You're, you're holding space for him. You're, you're being patient with him. You're, you know, you know what I mean? Like you're, you're letting him know that he's a full grown man with his freedom. And that's the key here is that this person he or she still feels like a child and they need to feel like a man or a woman again. Um, you know what I mean? Like they need to feel like a full grown adult again. They need to feel like their true selves again. They need to feel like they have that freedom. And it's like in that, in that mindset, they still feel like their freedom can be, you know, like their child, like their freedom could just be snatched from them at any moment. And so it's like, they they really need to navigate through that to feel like a, an adult again and heal themselves. But yeah, being mindful of their, of their triggers, but not walking on eggshells is the key here, I think. And, you know, like I said, also just honest communication just um you know asking for what you want but being patient and kind of like if you if you need to say something that might trigger them just kind of wording it the right way so that they understand where you're coming from you know like like the example i gave about you know if he wants to go out with it if he or she wants to go out with their friends like let them know that's fine they're an adult they can do that if they want but you're there if, if you know if they want to hang out you know let them just let them know just gonna kind of have that balance you know what i mean um but yeah, I feel like it's a process. I really do feel like they're going to have some epiphanies, though, especially after retrograde. Yeah, and I feel like the more, like, mysterious and enchanting you are, the more they're going to come for you. Like, if you let them pursue you on their own, like, if you kind of hold space for them and, like, you're there as part of their life, but you're not, like pressuring them to do anything like you're just like giving them that space to find themselves and heal themselves then I really feel like they're going to probably start pursuing you on your on their own they're going to see that you're confident in your you know you're sexy you're appealing you're confident you know who you are they're going to notice that energetic difference they're going to start just seeing it on your own that you're not anything like this person that you give them the freedom to to be an adult and to do what they want to do Yeah, because once you're in that energy, I feel like they're going to have to be the one that steps up and chooses their words wisely and plans their approach. So, yeah, um, that's pretty much what's going on with, your, with, you know, for this energy group. I feel like your spirit guides just wanted to say, hey, because um, I feel, I think they just wanted to, they, they just wanted to say, hey, <laughs> they just wanted to say, hey, this person does have feelings for you, um, but it's tricky. So I think a lot of you, a lot of you are probably asking right now, you're like, does this person like me? Do they not like me? Like you're just kind of left in the dark. You're, you're confused. And this is basically, they just wanted to tell you this is what's going on. Um, it is what it is. Like I said, I am, don't shoot the messenger. I'm unbiased. It's, this is just the energy. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm, it, this is just what it is. So it's kind of up to you guys, you know, as adults, it's up to you. Like, do you, do you want this? Do you want to be patient with this? Do you want to navigate this person's triggers and, you know, hold space for them as they go through this healing process. You know, this, this relationship will take some effort. This isn't, this isn't simple, you know, this, because like I said, this person gets really triggered and they go right back into that, like, you know, child, that mentality of, you know, being a child schooled by their mother or father. And, and so it's really, it's just a matter of open, honest communication and, you know, patience. So that's, that's up to you guys. Um, let me know if this resonates. As always, if you want a private reading, just email me. My email is below in the description box. My donation links are below. I really appreciate donations. Thank you guys for watching and please like, share, subscribe, and comment.